Hey, all right. Uh, good morning, everybody. I'm here just to give you a quick update on what's going to take place in the legislature this week. Uh, we're proposing two bills immediately that uh, we feel will protect Albertans during the ongoing COVID-19 pan pandemic, and a third uh, that we think is essential to support the energy industry during these uncertain times, as well as while well, Albertans are losing jobs across the province. Uh, the bills are as follows. Bill 10, the Public Health Emergency Powers Amendment Act 2020. Bill 11, the Tendency, the Tendency Statutes Emergency Provision Amendment Act 2020. And Bill 12, the Liabilities Management Statutes Amendment Act 2020. Uh, I will give you some more details on all three of those bills in a second. Uh, we may bring a fourth. We're still considering it uh, uh, right now. I think by tomorrow we'll have a, another idea whether or not we're going to make some other amendments to the Emergency Management Act uh, at the request of uh, some of our mayors, but we're just having a look at that. We'll have more to say on it later in the week. Specifically in regards to Bill 10, it will propose changes to the Public Health Act. Uh, it will give law enforcement agencies the full authority to enforce public health orders during a pandemic. Uh, community peace officers, in addition to police, are able to issue tickets to enforce COVID-19 public health orders related to mandatory self-isolation, restrictions on gatherings and businesses, and other measures to protect the health and safety of Albertans. Uh, Albertans are asked to submit a complaint to HS Environmental Public Health uh, online immediately uh, if they are aware of ind individual businesses or organizations violating the COVID-19 public health orders. Uh, I also mentioned in regards to that bill that proposed increases to the penalty amounts would put Alberta more in line with other provisions of Saskatchewan, BC, Ontario and with the Alberta Safety Codes Act. Now, uh, the Premier would have spoken about this last week. Uh, this will be the legislation that puts uh, that into effect. Bill 11, which is the, uh, the landlord, the landlord tenancy uh, bill, the situation around COVID is creating stress for many Albertans, including tenants who are concerned about rental payments at the end of the month. Uh, if this bill passes, uh, the act will ensure no one will be retroactively charged for rent increases or late fees uh, while the state of public health emergency is uh, in effect. Uh, Premier Kenny spoke about these measures on Friday. Uh, this bill will also protect mobile home site tenants who may own uh, their units, but rent the spaces. And then lastly, Bill 12, uh, which will be called the Liabilities Management Statutes Amendment Act 2020. Uh, this bill is, will be taking additional steps to reduce the numbers of orphan wells across the province uh, to, and to create jobs for Albertans. Uh, if passed, the act will enable orphan well associations to better manage and accelerate the cleanup of wells or sites which do have a responsible owner who do not, I should say, have a responsible owner across the province. Uh, Fast-tracking work that will boost employment in our oil service sector, protect jobs during these challenging economic times. Uh, in addition to that, tomorrow I will move a motion in the Assembly uh, that will create uh, the rules around a COVID-19 debate, uh, not an emergency debate and not a traditional uh, motion that you would see the government bring forward asking the Assembly to do something or say something. This motion will just put parameters around an update uh, i.e. how long the Premier will speak, how long the Leader of the Opposition will respond, uh, how long Cabinet Ministers who have updates for the House in regards to COVID-19 will speak, and then how long a question uh, back and forth period, similar to estimates, if you're familiar with that, will take place in the House. Uh, and that will happen tomorrow night, uh, starting at 7.30 after the supper break, and I anticipate we'll go to about 12.30 or 1 o'clock in the morning. Uh, at which time uh, the government will update uh, the opposition and the legislature and therefore, uh, through them, uh, Albertans on what's taking place with COVID-19. Uh, and with that, I'm happy to take questions. Morning, Minister. Morning, uh, it's Janet. Janet French from the CBC, just for the benefit of those on the phone. Um, the Public Health Act amendments, will they give any um, additional powers to the health minister or any other cabinet ministers? Uh, no, my understanding is that uh, that it would not give additional powers to the health minister or cabinet ministers. The act already uh, is sufficient uh, from our perspective. Uh, it'll give the ability to use different law enforcement tools to help enforce uh, things associated with the act. Okay, uh, just wanted to ask you as well about the Keystone announcement. Um, so where's the $1.5 billion coming from? Well, the finance minister will have more uh, to say about that, as will uh, the Premier. I'm not uh, going to attempt to uh, 
go through all of those specifics. He's better to do that. I will say, though, Janet, to that question, uh, that uh, later in the week, I will also be bringing a forward a motion in regards to the Keystone amount announcement inside the House uh, to provide the legislature an opportunity to debate uh, that announcement, uh, as well as the appropriate ministers to be able to provide updates uh, through the legislature uh, on, and to answer questions in regards to the Keystone announcement. So what's the motion going to be? It's very similar to what I spoke about in regards to COVID-19. Uh, we will be bringing forward a motion inside the legislature to allow a debate to take place in around Keystone uh, in the announcement today to be able to make sure that cabinet ministers can talk about their portions of their file that are relevant to that. Uh, hi, I got a question about the motion you talked about for tomorrow for uh, the debates surrounding COVID-19. Is the goal to fast track those debates? Are you going to like further limit debates around that? How's Let's well, the debate itself that uh, for COVID-19 tomorrow it will, is not a, a motion. It's not a, a, like a, in, in the context that it's not a motion that says anything from the legislature. The legislature won't be saying that they support something or don't support something. And it won't be in regards to passing laws. It will be a motion that creates a framework uh, to allow an update to happen in the legislature from the Premier and a variety of cabinet ministers in regards to the work that's taking place in COVID-19. And most importantly, allows a framework for the opposition to be able to ask questions in more detail about that work uh, that I think this is a complicated situation and from our perspective question period is probably not an adequate uh, format uh, for the opposition to have enough time to be able to talk to the government and so we'll be creating an ability for that to take place over a period of about four or five hours. I think we have a question on the phones so we'll go to the phones. First question is Emma Graney with the Globe and Mail. Go ahead Emma. G'day Minister. Um, thanks for taking my question mate. Quick question on Bill 12. Um, are we talking here that this is going to be part of the giant um, AER overhaul? Uh, are we talking just M LM, sorry, yeah, LMR? Are we talking more about orphan wells? Can you give me some more guidance there? So the, the Bill 12 will be a portion of the work that's been done on the AER overview. There's more to come. It's only one component of it, uh, but it will specifically be focused on uh, working to provide uh, more avenues to be able to overcome the orphan wells uh, issue to be able to make sure uh, that the orphan wells uh, organization can work in partnership uh, with uh, with companies in different ways to make sure that we can be able to uh, to to keep reclaiming wells we've been clear we see that as a way forward for job creation in the coming months uh, minister savage and i will have more to say on it once the opposition is briefed on the bill uh, but uh, the, the goal of that bill is to create a, a way forward to be able to create some jobs uh, in and around orphan wells and abandoned wells inside our province. Do you have a follow-up, Emma? I had a follow-up there as well. Um, actually, is this related at all to money you might be getting from the federal government? Are you still pushing to get that? Can you explain that? We, we are still pushing, certainly, uh, for money from the federal government uh, to help with abandoned and orphaned wells inside the province. Uh, that push will continue. I think you'll hear more from Minister Taves in the coming days on where that is at between our government and the federal government. And yes, this would help, uh, but not just for any infusion of federal cash into uh, to projects or into orphan and abandoned wells. It would help with the, the issue in general, uh, continue to move forward with, with some speed uh, to be able to uh, be able to start reclaiming wells to create jobs. Okay, we'll go to the floor. Thanks, Emma. Um, just in terms of logistics, we've been told you need to have a quorum of 20 people in the House. How are you going to work around that if you have a maximum of 15 people, um, according to so the recommendations? First, the, the legislature has been exempt from the recommendations by the chief medical officer. With that said, that doesn't mean that we don't want to take uh, precautions. And so we will, I have, I have worked with my, uh, my counterpart, Ms. Sweet, who's the opposition House leader. Uh, and in, our intention is to try to keep the House at 20 uh, members in the chamber plus the Speaker. Uh, we will be, we have already reduced pages, uh, so there are no pages inside the chamber. Uh, we will uh, be having security, obviously, still that secures the chamber, but not within the chamber to pass notes. And we will, uh, uh, you know, limit it that way. So that basically the ratio we're shooting for is 14 government caucus members and six opposition caucus members in the chamber at any given time. That's about roughly with the ratio of our two caucuses to the, to the elected representation. Uh, question period and certain times of the day will make that a little bit harder because we, we do want to make sure that we're giving uh, enough access to cabinet ministers uh, to answer questions. I mean, that's the parliamentary process. But that's, that our, that's our intention, to try to keep it at 20 and to provide distance uh, inside the chamber. Uh, myself and or Heather Sweet each day will move a unanimous consent motion asking for members to be able to speak from any chair and vote from any chair 
uh, at the beginning of, of the day, which will then allow everybody to, to kind of space out as best as they can. And just a quick follow-up, uh, in terms of Bill 10, is there anything written into, into the bill um, that would give it an expiration date or, or sunset clause on, on these extra powers? My understanding is no. Uh, to be honest, though, I, I'm not 100% sure on that one. So when, uh, when we come down, I'll get Jess to just double-check with the Minister of Health staff. But my understanding is no. Super. We've got one more on the phones. Yeah, we have a question from Catherine Grakowski with Alberta Today. Go ahead, Catherine. Uh, good, good morning, Minister. Um, so I guess I guess to follow up on um, I think it was Lisa's question there, I mean, it's my understanding that Bill 10, for instance, um, you had already done through regulation um, these powers for uh, the peace officers, police, to enforce this, and this is what was needed through legislation is to allow police to continue to have these powers after the pandemic. Is that is that correct, or am I totally misunderstanding that? Uh, you, you are correct that we took steps uh, last week to, uh, in the short term, regu use regulations to be able to put those powers in place to get them into effect right away uh, because we couldn't get the chamber back. Uh, but it is our government's perspective that something of that magnitude needs to be debated in the chamber and needs to be decided by the democratic body of Alberta. Uh, the Premier committed to that uh, during his announcement, and this will be the fulfillment of that commitment uh, in the coming days uh, that the legislature itself will decide what the law is in regards uh, to this issue going forward. Do you have a follow-up, Catherine? I, I do. And on, on Bill 12 for oil well reclamation, um, obviously this is an emergency type of legislation. Is it the intent to begin oil well reclamation during the pandemic? Well, again, the Premier's been clear that uh, we are going to attempt to continue to uh, build projects across the province and keep people working on, uh, on pipelines and uh, in the oil and gas industry where safe and within the requirements of what the Chief Medical Officer has set out. Uh, we believe we can do that on lots of projects. It's taking place uh, already all across uh, the province uh, where people are still able to work meeting the requirements uh, going forward. In addition to that, uh, we're not committing that the Chamber will only deal with emergency uh, legislation uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, when the Chamber is sitting, we will continue to try to bring forward uh, economic uh, related bills as well uh, that will uh, begin to pave the way uh, for the path forward for Alberta on the other emergency that's taking place and that's of course the economic crisis and the situation in the oil and gas industry across this province and so uh, I would consider this a part of that emergency plan uh, to begin to move forward uh, to help uh, repair our industry and to help put Alberta on a footing uh, where we'll be able to uh, lead the way uh, when the time comes to recover after this pandemic. Tom? A point of clarification on Bill 11, you said uh, this will ensure no one is retroactively charged while the emergency is in effect. Uh, when the emergency is lifted, will there be no retroactive charges or can I just get a clarification on that? Can they be retroactively charged after the emergency is lifted? Um, my understanding is uh, no. Uh, and again, though, Tom, I just want to be 100% sure on that. It's not my bill. So we will, okay. somebody right now I know is double checking that to make sure, but my understanding is no. Okay. Uh, and a point from one of my colleagues. Uh, have you heard anything from the federal government about oil sector bailout? I'm not sure if that falls under your purview, but what do we know on that so far? Well, I think you're going to hear more from Mr. Taves on where our conversations are at uh, with the federal government. Uh, to be clear, though, we continue uh, to make very, very clear the seriousness of what's taking place in our largest industry in this province and the largest industry in this country uh, and the fact that uh, it's important for Albertans uh, that uh, the Canadian government recognizes uh, that situation uh, and works with us to be able to make sure that there's a future for the oil and gas industry and for the energy industry in this country uh, because we need to do that to be able to overcome the economic situation that we're in. As for specific details and where that's at, you'll stay tuned. Uh, it's coming, but the conversations continue. Okay, one more from Janet, and then uh, he's got to rush out of here. Thanks. Just logistics question. What, I mean, we have a briefing on 12 today, so what order are you going to table all three today? What's the deal? It's a fair question. I am going to uh, call first reading on all three. They're on the early order paper, so I don't need to give notice, just logistically. I love it when you guys get into these detailed house leader questions. Um, so we will have first reading on all three, uh, and then I will move for unanimous consent to go to second reading on, let me make sure I have it right, the uh, Bill 11. Uh, the rent uh, bill uh, today, and we will debate uh, debate Bill 11 this afternoon. I've had indications from the official opposition that they will give us that consent to immediately move on to uh, the second reading of that stage, and then we'll start that debate and see where we end up. As for how it progresses through the rest of the week, I, I to be honest, I haven't thought about the rest of that order. Uh, but my, our, I don't intend to send members home uh, to their constituencies until we've passed at least all three pieces of this legislation 
had that COVID-19 debate tomorrow and pass the government motion that will come forward in regards to Keystone. And do you foresee any future amendments to the Public Health Act as it pertains to emergencies? Not that I've heard. I have heard uh, that there are some considerations in regards to the Emergency Management Act, which is different than the, the Health Act. We passed uh, some of those when we were last here in regards to making sure that they, we could run emergencies simultaneously with municipalities. My understanding is there's some conversations taking place between municipal affairs and the mayors inside the province about some potential for some other uh, quick little changes that may make the situation easier for municipalities. Uh, that's as far as I've been briefed at the moment. If they do come forward with some legislation that can help municipalities and us to be better able to manage the, uh, the pandemic, of course, we'll bring it to the chamber as soon as we can. There'll be a motion, uh, it, uh, no, so there's two motions. Let me just be clear on that. I know it's, we got a lot of stuff happening in a couple of days. First will be the motion tomorrow that will happen in regards to COVID-19 and an update to the chamber. It doesn't have the house or the legislature calling for anything specifically, just an opportunity to ask questions. Later in the week will be a government motion in support of Keystone and an opportunity for all 87 members of the chamber to debate that announcement. All right, guys, thanks Super. for your time. Thanks, guys. Okay.